It's one of those things where I find it so amusing that I'm recognized now as a creature designer. When my background and my education is industrial design, and I've developed products for the disabled for many years. As a designer in film, you're, you're yeah. doing things like Oblivion most recently. Um, that's industrial design to me. But when I'm doing Creature, it's industrial design. My approach is exactly how I did traditional industrial design. It's just that the surface is typically rough and pliable. And that's about the only difference because the process is fundamentally the same. If you're not familiar with the films that I've worked on, I've been very fortunate to work on some pretty big productions like Avatar, Star Trek, the new Star Trek, Prometheus, and all of those require very different skill sets. Tron is another one completely different than Prometheus, of course. But each and every single production, I give the same essential foundation of creativity as I see it, to each of the objects that I have to design. It comes down to one thing, and I mean this in the literal sense, and that is sensitivity. I should have said hypersensitivity, because what it is about is truly, truly stopping and sensing the moment. How many of you had breakfast this morning? Not enough of you. This is gonna be a long day. We're gonna get a lot of people falling asleep. Whenever you have something to eat from this day forward, at least try this today. Taste it. Truly, truly taste it. Feel the weight of what it is you're about to put in your mouth. Feel the warmth or the coolness. The flavors, the smell, the texture, the multiple textures become so sensitive that you truly can dissect in your mouth what it is you're eating. And do the same with all the senses. Music, anything with smell, anything visual, particularly for those of us who are visual artists, you need to become hypersensitive. What that does is it gives you the opportunity to build a library, a personal library, a personal base and foundation of reference that is not just a visual base, but one that is actually pretty intimate. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. A drawing to me is the most important tool that I have. It's something that I use today. It's something that I know a number of speakers are going to be exclamatory about in regards to the importance of being able to draw, because drawing is the visual language. Drawing to me is no different than saying, basically, or, or comparing it to spoken language. The more articulate you need to be, the more precise your visual skills need to be. Deliberate versus random. This is a real critical part about being creative for me now. And that is coming up with ways to break the mold for myself. I'm gonna have certain habits that I've generated over the years. Symmetry is one of those things that we just cannot help from find the beauty within because it's just such a naturally occurring theme throughout nature. So with symmetry, I was working on Super 8. I don't know if you've seen Super 8, but I had this idea of maybe I can use Inkblot's Rorschach mirroring as a means to communicate a whole new way of designing a creature for JJ and Steven Spielberg. This is kind of the final result. Even on the head, I was using this inkblot technology, if you will. So I generated about 100 of these inkblot notions for JJ to let him and Steven see whatever it is they're seeing and select directions because it was such a broad, open end as to what the design could be. I didn't know how to start, quite frankly. So I went as vague as possible and started coming up with these symmetrical imagery symmetrical images that are generated a variety of ways. These are drawn in ZBrush. If you know ZBrush, you'll appreciate it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Sketching in symmetry is the trick. So software driven, I'd mentioned ZBrush, those ink blots that I did were done with Photoshop. ZBrush is drawing as well. There's something called Alchemy. It's a free piece of software, quite fantastic. And there's Photobooth, Photobooth for the Mac. This is how Photobooth is typically utilized. and that's my Jack Nicholson. It's great for what it is, but it's so much more powerful than that. And I call it sketching with mirrors. My friend Scott Robertson and I were at a party and we got bored and we started messing around with his iPad and we came up with this kind of controlled chaos thing, or I like to call it managed mania. It's so crazy and spastic, but what it is is utilizing found objects to generate creature design. 
But when it comes to creature and character, biology, nature, yeah, that, that is the thing that I absolutely must use as inspiration. But really, in general, design for me is about being informed first, being knowledgeable first about what it is you're doing. Before I draw, I research, and I, I kind of pride myself on really knowing what the subject matter is about, whether it's a, a technology or a biology or a culture. I spend a lot of time and personal money. Um, even though I work on huge films, it's not as if they say, okay, Neville, you have a $1,000 to go buy books and DVDs and, and learn. You do that on your own dime. And I love that part of it because a film to me is a reason to get smarter. And I come in before offering solutions. I come in uh, with the ability to have an intellectual conversation about the subject matter. And that has, I think, proven itself to be a leg up as a designer. Uh, a slower entry, though, and uh, that's sometimes a problem because others will come in with visuals that are perhaps shiny and juicy and compelling, where I come in with words. But what I tend to be able to bring to the table are others who are, go this route of research-based design, for creatures in particular, is you have the wherewithal to also convince the client that your choices make sense, or the choices are right. Avatar was one of those films where when I came into it, I realized that I was no specialist. I, I didn't have a tremendous amount of information, but I already knew so much about the subject matter. So sitting down with James Cameron and talking about uh, flying creatures, I realized, well, I know what, I know a, a tremendous amount as a pedestrian, not a scientist by any means, but I know a lot about pteranodons. I know a lot about um, all sorts of dinosaurs and um, just all sorts of things because as a child, it, like any kid, quite frankly, you know these things. And I just happened to take it a step further, which is I bought tons of books and I've read about um, comparative uh, bionics and all these things that really don't lend themselves, obviously, to a creature designer. But when you study it and you just know it, when it comes time to design something, you have the tools and the knowledge so that you can actually start to manipulate what exists and invent new things. To work on, let's say, uh, well, a creature, because that's such a specific thing. A director would say that the creature, I would like you to do something that is the following description. And you get that description, and this happened on one production where I read what the description was, and I thought to myself, no offense, but the writer is not a creature designer. The writer is not a person who's been living and breathing and, and ingesting uh, information on animal life and biology for years. That's what I have been doing. So it's conceivable that I could actually bring in something that they hadn't expected or at least really expand on their description. So I asked of the director, would you mind if I reconceive entirely that scene and come up with an alternative and even give you storyboards, um, respectfully deviating from what the writer had written? And um, fortunately his answer was, yeah, I'd love to see what else you're thinking. And what I brought in was used in the film and it was because I see it not out of arrogance, but rather you hired a specialist, somebody dedicated to this specific um, task, and I should be able to bring in much more to the game than what the person had asked for. What's important too is when you pass that on to animators and riggers and, and uh, performers who do motion capture and performance capture, you have given them something richer and deeper to actually work with. And that's what tends to not happen enough with creature and character design is to think of it as a performer where you have to know what a creature's motivation is, why it exists beyond, I've been hired to design something and draw it. I personally love to know its gestation, its sexual dimorphism, its habitat, um, its diet, all those things. You never really see them on screen, but 
like a good actor who is given a script and the character doesn't have backstory, your job is to figure out where was I born, who was my mom, what was my relationship. And when you have that in place, when you say that one or two lines that you've been given, you have a reference point of why you would articulate that way. You have your motivation. And so I treat character and creature design the exact same way.